This is daylight view of Viper. Its uh, plan is to have it in the dark, so as you approach, all you could hear is breathing, but you don't see anything until you get close enough to trigger it. Then lights come on, and I'll show that later at night. I'm going to go use the uh, motion sensor to trigger him now. And that's the daylight view of Viper. Okay, I'm going to try and provide a little documentation for, for Viper here. Anybody might be interested. This is, I guess I should back up and show you. This is a mask called Viper, and the character was inspired by one I saw from Poison Props. They did a pneumatic uh, prop like this, similar to this anyway. I wanted an electric one, and uh, this is using a car window motor that runs on a cable to a track, so it's sort of a linear actuator, um, reversible. Power supply, it's 12 volts. Primarily, the only thing I'm using on it is the 12 volts. It has something on the order of 60 amps available to it, the 12 volts, 110 in. Uh, this is a four button learning controller, also referred to as the Scuba Boo controller. It's uh, four relays, you push the buttons, button bang to uh, teach it, and there's an MP3 player. It has ambient and um, scare tracks. This is from a Harbor Freight radio driveway alert. It connects over there to a wireless PIR to trigger it. And then there's two relays that are actually doing the heavy lifting, if you'll pardon the pun. There are some connectors here so I can isolate the power to the unit. Um, there is uh, a 5.5 millimeter connector here that allows me to disconnect the board easily. This one uh, provides a uh, disconnect for the relays, so the board can't energize the relays, and I can disable the motor while working on it. Um, and then there's a 12-volt feed. And uh, going to the prop itself, along with a four-wire harness, the four wires contain the audio track to the amplifier on the prop and on the character and uh, the switch closing for the controller that actually handles the animation. There's bungees to assist in the lifting process. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And there is another bungee to act as a shock cord, a shock absorber plate. These two cords running up here are used to bring the wings into position, and we'll see more about that later. And then there's a small wire that's used to control the arms, to lift the arms from the rest position to extend them. This can be disconnected and uh, taken down into two pieces. One, of course, the lifter mechanism. The other is a vertical post, which the a character sits on, and this can be put in its own stand and have the, the character freestanding. Um, we have uh, an amplifier, 12 watt, I believe it is. It's 12 volt amplifier that runs the two speakers for the audio tracks on it. I've taken and just brought up 12 volts here and provided a disconnect so I could take this stuff off and put it away, but. Uh, the 12 volts is then used to generate uh, the voltage. This is a uh, 12 volt to 5 volt 10 amp converter to drive the servos. I uh, will probably ultimately change that out for a 6 volt, but right now it's doing just fine. Um, and this is a 12 volt to 7.5 volt converter that powers the propeller board. This is a parallax propeller activity board um, with a uh, resistor modified on there to 
allow a trigger uh, voltage divider to signal the board when to start the routine. There's also three wires uh, to an ADC that allows it to be taught and more, more about that later using a pot to feed servo positions when teaching the board. There's a micro SD card for storing the show on and uh, the arms are controlled, uh, not controlled actually, basically the arms are erect when the, the device rises. There's a heavy duty servo, it's an HS. 805 BB uh, that move, flaps the wings and another one that moves the uh, head and neck mechanism. The head is turned by a smaller servo here that rides along with the uh, head bottom mechanism. And the vampire is on a PVC pipe to a styrofoam wig head and then the mask is applied to that. These are rods, um, carbon fiber rods that are from a kite. Um, I will probably change the color scheme on the wings to make them light with dark lines on them, but right uh, for the time being, this is, uh, we'll see how this works for a while. <clears throat> I intended to allow me to, to disassemble this. So there's a connector here that uh, disengages the uh, trigger and the audio and this is uh, strictly 12 volts for all of the converters and the amplifier. There is another connector that allows me to connect the pot to it for, for teaching and I can disconnect the trigger here uh, as well. Um, let's At this point I guess uh, Plug it in, lower it. Um, well, okay, uh, lower the mechanism. We'll, we'll show you what it looks like when it, it's in action um, before I put the uh, the cloth back down on it. This is the wireless PIR. You can hear the thing breathing. Um, I should turn up the audio for that a little bit. There's a volume control in the back. One of the servos is causing a buzz. Hmm. The idea is, is that it's in a dark area. When it first triggers, lights come on and it starts moving. So you will do play with the wireless PIR at this point to trigger it. Retract, the lower, and that's it. About six feet tall, I don't know, six, in a, six feet, a couple of inches tall, and rises up to a little over, uh, about nine and a half feet, I guess. Um, mm. Let's see if I can show from the other end. Okay, this is what it looks like from the back side. Um, I'm going to trigger with a PIR here, and, uh, and the lifting mechanism is on the shock cord, and as it lifts, it tightens that up and pulls the wings into position. Um, the wings could just be parked behind it to keep them out of the way, but I wanted to be able to take it apart and, and uh, put it away.